I'll walk a lonely road The only one that I have ever known I don't know where it goes But it's home to me and I walk alone I'll walk this empty street Good. I'm all the way up All right Class Today we're going to talk about you not geometry, but you. Are you ready? Are you prepared? You're gonna learn some things today? 3.2, 3.3? Some fun stuff? Let's go. Yeah. Man, I wish the real Russell White was here. I know, he's the best. I wish he was here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is she doing? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Love geometry. Whoa, there he is. You can stop me. I'm all the way up. All the way up. All the way up. I'm all the way up. I'm all the way up. Nothing can stop me. I'm all. Chapter five is just so hard. Yeah, man. I need. We need Russell to explain this to us. Yeah. Russell can't explain chapter five. You can need me. I must help a Dr. Hansen. Hey, wake up. Whoa, wake up. Ah. Okay, class, are you having trouble with chapter 5? So, first, we're going to 5.2, the most important lesson. First, we have perpendicular bisectors. If any angle bisector that is perpendicular to the opposite line is called a perpendicular bisector. When three perpendicular bisectors meet, a point of concurrency is called the circumcenter. Here, we have an angle bisector. It bisects an angle directly in half. And when three angle bisectors meet at a point of concurrency, it's called the incenter. The in, the incenter is equidistant from each side. Hey Jack, throw me the book. Here. We have a median. A median of a triangle is a segment with the endpoints being a vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side. Over here is the centroid. It is the point of concurrency of the medians. Every triangle has three medians that are concurrent. The point of concurrency of the medians of a triangle is called a centroid and it's always inside the triangle. The centroid is two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Here, we have the example of an altitude. An altitude of a triangle is a segment from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side and perpendicular to the line containing that side. An altitude can lie in the interior or the exterior. The point of concurrency of the altitude is called the orthocenter. And the orthocenter lot of lines contain the altitudes of a triangle, in this case triangle ABC, and are concurrent at the orthocenter. Right here, they go from a vertex to the opposite side and it has to be perpendicular. What do you think, Russell? I'm all the way up! <laughs> okay, class. Next, we have 5.5, our free pick. Here in 5.5, we're going to learn about triangular inequalities. The triangular inequality theorem says the sum of the lengths of a triangle must be greater than the length of the third side of that triangle. So here, the triangle PQR, with side PQ measuring 7, side QR measuring 9, and side PR measuring 11. So according to the triangular inequality theorem, 7 plus 9 must be greater than 11. 7 plus 9 is 16, which is greater than 11. So this can be classified as a triangle. What do you think, Russell? I'm all the way up! Here, we have lesson 5.4, Internet Proofs. Jack, hit that beat. When you do the 
in that proof, you have four steps. First step is, look at the given and you can find the proof. A given, measure of angle four is, uh, angle four is an exterior angle of ABC. Proof, the measure of angle four is greater than the measure of angle one, and the measure of angle four is greater than the measure of angle two. Step two, look at our diagram. On the exterior angle theorem, the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. Since the angle measures are positive, the definition of inequality implies that the measure of angle 4 is greater than the measure of angle 1. Then, once you reach a contradiction, we start about our conclusion. We always start our conclusion with just use the contradiction in blank. Then, we write what we are trying to prove. So we said, this is a contradiction in the measure of angle 4 not greater than the measure of angle 1, or the measure of angle 4 is not greater than the measure of angle 2. Then, we write the second part of our conclusion, which is always starts with, therefore, blank. And we've thrown that blank with the original proof. So, therefore, the measure of angle 4 is greater than the measure of angle 1, and the measure of angle 4 is greater than the measure of angle 2. I'm all the way And then Cody West will walk in from there, and we'll be over there, we'll play up all the way up on the speaker, and Cody West will walk in, and he'll go, man, get out of here, he's gonna push you down, he's gonna erase you, he's gonna erase, he's gonna erase pain like that, and he's gonna, he's gonna write, Cody West, Dr. White. Go! Shut up, I'm gonna say, cameraman. Huh? No. Alright, so I say, what do you think, bro? Alright, <laughs> three, two, one. What do you think, Russell? <laughs> I love geometry. Yeah. 